Hi, um, what's up? So I'm here to kind of talk to you guys about homelessness and what really causes it, um, what it really means, the type of people that are out there. Um, and you know, we all see them. We see them on the freeway. Sometimes they're just tucked in a corner into the side of the gas station. Um, a lot of them sometimes even go to libraries, ERs, um, especially during particularly cruel parts of the year, like winter. Um, here would be the summer because of the air conditioning. Um, so some of the leading factors that cause homelessness would be domestic violence, mental health issues, health, even physical health conditions. That's one that's not represented a whole lot. Um, veterans go through homelessness, financial instabilities. Uh, I think we're all familiar with when the economy crashed uh, and what that did. Um, there's a lot of homeless youth. The homeless youth makes up most of the population, the homeless communities. Uh, addiction is part of it too. There's people who end up losing everything they have their families, their homes, um, due to an addiction. And it's extremely hard to overcome. Um, <clears throat> so, some statistics that I will give you. 63% uh, of the homeless women have experienced domestic violence in their lives. Um, it is one of the leading causes of homelessness according to a lot of the statistics bureaus. Um, it's one of the things that is <laughs> it's so prominent um, and it's it's not even really addressed and there's so much judgment that goes with it. You know, you I think probably on more than one occasion we've heard, well, why does she even stay? Why doesn't she just leave? Um, this is why. This is why she doesn't leave. This is why she stays. It's something that's familiar, but it's a home. It's not out on the streets. And there is some predictability to the situation. Being homeless, there is no certainty. There's no stability. There's no predictability. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where you're going to sleep. You don't know where you're going <laughs> to go. There's nowhere to go. Um, and I know this specifically from my own experience. I left home when I was 16 for the first time. Uh, <clears throat> just because of family family stuff going on, situations, and uh, I felt it would be better if I just wasn't there. And <laughs> it was difficult to say the least. Um, and then I also was homeless while working and holding jobs, simply because of the fact that the cost of living and what I was making, it just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, and I didn't have anybody to kind of move in with me and help me out as far as carrying part of the financial burden. So a lot of times I'd get off shift and I'd go just sleep in my car. Because what else am I going to do? You know, I, I had a job so I was able to eat. Um, I could take showers at my parents' place. Um, and then I ended up in a relationship where I was there for five years and we did live, live together and I was still working so I was paying for stuff and trying to carry my part of it he didn't work um, it was a bad situation and it, it's not like you meet these this guy and all of a sudden you're he's just like this bad guy right out the gate no it doesn't work that way <laughs> like it just it doesn't people he was very charming he was great for the first year and then it just turned into a nightmare it turned into an absolute nightmare and I didn't know what to do my family and I weren't really on speaking terms um, 
my mom, I found out once I had left, was actually going through her own t domestic violence situation. Um, and it just got to a point where it was so bad that I decided one morning after five years, you know what, I'm going to leave. I have nowhere to go. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to leave. I have to leave because I don't know where this is headed. I don't know where this is going to go. But I have a feeling it's not going to be a good place, and it, it, it wouldn't have been. Um, <laughs> it's a difficult thing to do, and I don't fault any woman for being terrified to do it. I really don't. I was, um, and I didn't even have children to take care of. There wasn't any of that. Um, it was me. And that was that was scary enough. I couldn't imagine having ch children out there. That would just a lot of women endure that for their children. <clears throat> so prior to judging anybody, the next time that you see them, keep in mind that they could be me. They could be you. We are all estimated to be, for the most of us, not all of us, some of us are a little better off, about one check, paycheck away from being homeless. Meaning, you know, if you were to lose your job, which happened to me, I was laid off from an office position right after the crash, worked in real estate, and um, you don't get a job very quickly after that, I mean, you can you may never recover from that. And there's people who are dealing with that and have dealt with that and have ended up on the street for that for that very reason. Um, so I'm gonna get it off of my stupid face here and just show you some brief photos and statistics um, on the situation because it is a situation it's cri it's critical we need to be dealing with this and there needs to be an understanding about it and even if you don't accept it there needs to be a common ground so that people don't die because homeless people die I was one of them that almost did outside of a gas station sick I had an extreme deficiency that I didn't know about until a friend of mine found me and took me to the ER, but none of those people in that gas station, not a single person, not even the employees, came to help me. They just probably assumed I was drunk or on drugs when I was just, I was dying. I would have died. So, stay here, and we'll put the videos, through the videos, the photos through. <laughs>